What's going on guys? Uh, welcome to another episode of Hanging with the Herd here. Uh, follow up for the end of Bill's training camp here. We're, we're into the last practice of training camp. So uh, what's going on Pierre? How you doing what's today? What's going man? on Aaron? Yeah man, just uh, I know cut down day is coming up pretty soon man. And uh, I don't know man, who's making the team man. There's a lot of, you know, we have a lot of you know great players who will unfortunately not make the team man. But um, I'm sure we're going to be talking about a few of them today. Yeah, and I, you know, uh, I was talking to somebody last night, and they had mentioned, like, what a crazy next week it's going to be. Just in the NFL in general, uh, you get something like a 1,000 roster moves coming up in the next two weeks. So uh, that it's going to be wild and exciting at the same time. Um, so we'll get into uh, get into the show now. Sweet, sweet. Uh, yeah, man. So went to camp last night. Uh, first time I've ever been to St. John Fisher for a camp. Uh, but the biggest news ended up being when I drove home and my phone app said Bills have uh, agreed to the one-year turn with Jairus Bird, man. So welcome back, Jairus. Welcome back. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I got that news, I was super ecstatic. But what was funny was that I normally don't really, uh, you know, tweet players. Um, but for some apparent reason, you know, after watching the Doug Willie interview um you know yesterday in regards to bird i kind of felt like you know me as a fan diehard bills fan i was like you know what let me tweet this guy man so what's funny was that you know after i i tweeted him I, and then about a few hours later he signed so you know that was one of those things where uh i took a little bit of credit on that one <laughs> but i mean i was super excited yeah. that he signed you know we definitely need him um, at safety, man. Uh, you know, we're kind of thin at DB. I kind of understand why he held out. Um, he didn't want to get injured during training camp, or that's what it seems like. He's actually coming back, you know, the day after, you know, training camp, um, you know, winds out. So I get that point. Yeah, I knew he was coming back. I, I wasn't sure if it would be this soon. It's actually the perfect timing because he still has whatever, 18, 18 days, days, 17 yep. days to get really yeah get the defense uh, uh i'm sure he's in good shape but he'll have to pick up like this type of tempo of offense being on the field for uh long stretches stuff like that so he'll have to get in that conditioning i think that's plenty of time plenty of time for him to learn the playbook and get right back into it uh so i think it's a perfect time for him to come back i, I knew he was going to i think as far as the holdout goes though it, it was part of it was about injury uh, he is one of the best agents in the business, though. I think part of it was saying to the Bills, like, I don't really like that you did apply the franchise tag to me. I think he felt slightly offended by that and would like to have a long-term deal, uh, whether or not it's with the Bills or not. But I think he was showing everyone in the league that uh, he feels he deserves a long-term deal. But he's back in time to make things happen. We just move forward the rest of the year uh, and see what happens, if they can renegotiate, get him a long-term next year. I mean... So. I kind of like how you bring up the word or the phrase move forward, man. You know, Bills fans just have to say, you know what, he's here now. Let's move forward from it. Let's worry about, you know, us signing him to a long-term deal, you know, during the offseason next year. Um, because, you know, there's some fans out there that are saying, well, you know, he's greedy. I don't want him. I mean, you know, NFL is a business, man. I mean, you know, we have to stop, you know, getting into the whole, well, you know, he shouldn't, he shouldn't complain over millions. I mean, you know, in the NFL – they make that much money. So if he wants to negotiate, you know, his whole his whole lifestyle, then he has that right. And fans should just worry about the entertainment you know, aspect of it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he's here now, man. Sure. You know, we should move forward from it. And, you know, let's go, man. Yeah. Like I was telling, I was sitting next to a guy at practice last night, and like I was telling him, he was, he was talking about, you know, Cobb and uh, getting ready for the Redskins. Honestly, I don't really care about the next two preseason games. As well. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. That's all I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and then seeing guys positioning themselves for roster cuts. But really, as far as from today moving forward, uh, with EJ recovering, it's all about week one, in my opinion. So get Jairus ready for week one. Get EJ ready for week one. You know, get Stevie ready for week one. Uh, and that, that's what it's all about. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, I think that's what they're training for moving forward yeah, here. Yeah. So. I mean, you bring uh, up a good we, point, man, about getting our players ready for week one. 
Stevie Johnson, if you watch this, sit your ass down, man. We don't need you to play against the Skins. We don't need you to play week four, man. We need you for week one. Um, I heard you pulled up a couple times during training camp. If you're not 100%, sit your ass down, man. Ride the bike. You know, keep it slow. I know you're super competitive. I know you're fighting, you know, off of being a seventh round draft pick. You know, we all get it. We all applaud you for that. But, you know, we don't want to see, you know, Stevie on the field. We don't want to see CJ on the field because you're right, man. Injuries is one of those things where you never know when it's going to happen. So if we're able to control that in any way, especially if these games don't count, I get, you know, why you want to get out there or just in general, you know, you want to, you want to get the feel for the game again, you know, which is understandable. But, you know, what's more important, you know what I mean? Well, but the thing is, too, the Redskins game is the last chance for the starters to where C, where Stevie hasn't played. I'm okay with him going out and playing in a series or two. I don't think that's going to be the difference in pulling his groin. Um, so if it's the groin or the hamstring injury, uh, so that's not the injury I'm concerned about. It's the freak accidents, the Dustin Keller type hits, but those are unavoidable. Those can happen in practice. Um, so. I, I'm okay with him going out and running, running some routes and feeling the game speed because they're not going to play much against the Lions. That's really going to be guys proving that they should be on the roster for the final cut day. Uh, but starters, I don't expect to see them really play against the Lions at all. So, yeah. Uh, one, one thing I do want to touch on, uh, another uh, move that the team made. We released Ryan Lindell, as everybody knows, this week. Everyone likes Ryan. Uh, the writing was on the wall. So, you know, nobody was really taken back by it. But Brian just released an open letter to Bill's Nation today. Guy's just a class act all, all around. Uh, you know, and I wish him the best. Signed a job, signed with Tampa. Uh, so he was only a free agent for a day. And uh, we'll see him again this year. What was actually neat, though, is that, you know, Dustin Hopkins said that, you know, the first person who contacted him was Ryan Lindell saying that, you know, you got the job now. And if... Uh, you know, you ever miss a kick, you know, blame it on, you know, Powell. So, uh, you know, blame it on the holder. So, uh, you know, that was pretty funny. But, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. a class act, man. Uh, I wish him all the best. You know, I'll be cheering for him. We're, we're all wishing Ryan Lindell the best of luck and look forward to seeing him at the Bucks game. Hopefully he doesn't kick a game winner on yeah, us. Yeah, right. Though, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I went to practice last night. Um, it wasn't the most exciting practice. Uh, it's my first trip to St. John Fisher. It was a really nice place for for uh, afternoon of football. The Bills' first class organization when it comes to putting that on for the fans. Sold out show. Um, got a little concerned about Gilmore getting hurt, but I guess he's that's it's just a little minor foot thing that he'll be fine. He just kind of tweaked his foot. Uh, but that that scared me, man. If, if Gilmore goes down, we're in big trouble. So... Overall, like I said, nothing crazy impressive. Uh, the the crowd went nuts on that Marcel Darius interception, and he ran it back. And Fred Jackson chased him down and wouldn't let him in the end zone. Yeah, that was sweet. <laughs> and, uh, that was sweet. Uh, it looked like, you know, the guys are genuinely having a good time out there. Is the one thing I noticed. And and talking to some of the fans that have been there in years past, uh, they said during the Gailey years it didn't look fun. Uh, you know it. The guys didn't have like passion and excitement, and they said it's a huge difference. Uh, and you could see it uh, all night. Fred Jackson was chasing Aaron Williams around, and they were like sparring and like pretending to fight. And Freddie tackled him at one point, threw him to the ground. You know, like. But talking about Aaron Williams, though, yep. man, it seems like he's he's fitting well at safety, man. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, he looked good. I mean, he he and Fred Jackson were probably the two guys having the most fun at practice, and uh, he just seemed really confident back there. Uh, there was one play specifically that stands out to me where uh, Derek Rogers, there was a beautiful pass right down the sideline, fell right in his uh, chest area. He should have caught it. It was right on the sideline, and Williams just came and kind of knocked it out. Rogers also dropped it, but, but when Rogers got up, man, Williams was in his ear, and he was loving every minute of it, just like you know, chirping away right in his ear the whole way back to the sideline. And well, I felt felt bad for Rogers because he's a little soft mentally. Uh, it appears uh, it showed that Williams is comfortable, and he, he's really having a good time playing safe. I was actually hearing a Joe B uh, 
interview with Aaron Williams. And, you know, Aaron Williams said, man, I mean, I want to be like Jarius Bird, man. I want to learn from him, and I want to be like him. So, you know, with the Jarius Bird signing, Aaron William will definitely benefit from that, man. So, you know, it, it actually looks real good right now, man. Aaron no Williams doubt. and Bird back there at safety, you know, hard-hitting ball hawkers. Let's see how it pans out, man. Yeah, man, and speaking of which, uh, that kind of brings me to the next thing I'd like to talk about. Cuts are coming up here. Uh, I think there's one cut tonight uh, to get trimmed down to 75, I believe, or, or maybe tomorrow that is. Yeah. Uh, and then another cut is coming right up around the corner here. So um, those are going to become some pretty good players, and there's going to be players from other teams that are pretty good that are cut. Uh, so some roster moves are going to happen. Uh, what do you think are, are maybe your top three names that are going to get released from this ro roster? Oh, wow, man. Uh, well, top three in general. Um, I'll probably say Brad Smith. He might be uh, our biggest name. Denora Searcy, I think. You know, we're not going to keep, you know, that many safeties. And, uh, you know, with him playing as bad as he has, I think that, you know, he might be the uh, a second one. And the third one, I would hate to say it because... I'm pulling for him. I really am, man. But, you know, Derek Rogers, man. I think, you know, the team is just like, listen, we just can't deal with you, man. I mean, you know, you're not into it. You're not a professional. You're, you know, uh, you know, reports are that he's pretty lazy. And, um, and yeah, man, so those will be my big three, man. How about you? Yeah, I, don't know. I, I think probably all those guys, uh, you know, seriously, he's definitely on the bubble. It'll be interesting to see what they do numbers-wise at safety. Uh, and, again, it'll be interesting to see what they do number-wise at wide receiver. If, if they do indeed keep seven, maybe Rodgers stays as a project-type guy. And they, But what I, I really tried to observe him closely at practice just because I've heard so many different reports. Some days he's awesome, some days he's not. And uh, he did not have it last night. He got blanketed a few times by cornerbacks that probably aren't going to play a lot this year uh, and just couldn't shake those guys. When he did get open, he dropped passes, uh, and his head just didn't seem to be in it. A guy like that should be next to Stevie Johnson all practice, picking Stevie's brain, you know. How do I get better? How do I become like you? And he was just kind of off to, you know, by himself a little bit, feeling sorry for himself when he came off the sideline, and that just didn't look, it wasn't a good look to me. Uh, but again, I, like you, I am falling for him. Um, but I do see Brad Smith getting cut. I, I just, he's been pedestrian throughout the training camp. Uh, he hasn't done anything to earn his spot. Uh, I think Terrell Troop is a name uh, that yeah. Bills fans are really pulling for, second, big, big second round pick. He might not last on this roster. He just hasn't done anything. He hasn't made a lot of mistakes, but he hasn't done he hasn't stood out a lot either. either to solidify. You know, and plus, there's other guys there that are doing the same thing he is. Uh, you got Ross. Uh, you know, Carrington's definitely a lock. So I mean, there's there's guys that D tackle. Um, Branch is a guy that yeah, had, we haven't heard of since he came over signed. So it'll be interesting to watch that defensive line. Uh, and see if they bring in anybody yeah. else and cut I some mean, of the guys that we have. Just real quick, you know, I don't mean to make this a, uh, you know, Derek Rogers show, but, you know, I just wanted to share just, uh, you know, one quick point, man. I mean, you know, Derek Rogers is extremely talented. So I can understand why fans are, are pulling for him. I mean, because if he had it all together, in my opinion, he can easily be our best wide receiver. He's that talented. So... But it's just, you know, he's not he's not consistent, man. You know, uh, even Marone said, listen, his issue is his consistency. Um, he just doesn't have it, you know, down right. in and down out. So, yeah, now with Troop, I'm definitely with you on that one. He hasn't looked bad, but he hasn't stood out either. Um, but right. right now, man, our front seven looks extremely solid. Now, you know, with Bradham... Most likely, he's going to get suspended the first four games. Um, I hope it's it's not four, but you know, with the whole you know collective bargaining agreement and uh, you know NFL rules is you know uh, if you get caught one time, it's four games. So 
So now we have to figure out who's going to be playing, you know, outside linebacker. Um, I do like the kid. Uh, I believe his name is Chris White, number 51. He seems pretty solid, but at the same time, you know, with our, you know, depth now at linebacker, he might not make the team either. But um, if he does, I'm kind of pulling for him. Yeah, but Penn likes him. Penn likes him. I think he'll he'll stick around as a special teams guy, um, and a backup linebacker. Um, so I don't I don't see him playing the outside though. I see him being a Kiko backup at wide receiver. Man, who are we going to keep? Man, we have eight eight wide receivers who can easily make the team. We already have five locks, but is this that sixth person? Who's all going to get cut? You think, man? If we're going to keep six. What three are uh, getting cut? Well, Smith. I think all fans right now are in agreement that Smith is really the odd man out, uh, just based on age, yeah, contract, talent, and what versatility he provides that position. He he doesn't do anything different than the guys that are already there. Yeah. Um, I think Kaufman is Quick. has a lot of potential, uh, but I think he's a guy that they could cut and then. He is a talent, but I think they could cut, get away with cutting him and putting him on the practice squad and keeping him there. If you cut Roger, somebody's going to scoop him up. Which the coaching staff, yeah, the coaching staff just has to decide: do they want to, you know, look two years from now and see him progressing and being on somebody else's team, uh, doing well? You know, is that a risk they're willing to take to keep a guy like a Marcus Easley, who's had a really great camp uh, and has finally become the guy Buddy Nick thought he was? So they definitely have some tough decisions to make, but I think they're going to be fine either way. I mean, it's definitely Stevie, Woods, Graham. Uh, you know who really uh, stood out to me in camp that made some very big mistakes was Marquise Goodwin at wide receiver. There was about two to three plays in a row where Cobb hit him. One of the passes was a little bit ahead of him, but he still got both hands on it. But Cobb hit him a few times in stride, and the ball just popped off his hands, and one of them went for a pick, and the other one could have easily gone for a pick, so I haven't seen a ton out of Goodwin except for on the straight route, so I don't know how that's going to work for him 16 games a year, or if he's just kind of a gadget player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with Goodwin, um, he's actually been making a, a lot of plays in camp. I think last night was probably his uh, you know, worst day of camp. But, you know, whenever you drop passes, man, I know Chris Carter always says if it hits your hand, you got to catch it. But, you know, the, the main thing with catching balls, man, it's all about concentration. So. And even things like uh, that, the, the interception against Minnesota, though, that, that was on Goodwin. That was not on Cobb. I don't know, man. I think I disagree with you on that one, 100%. I saw it. Uh, plenty of times on replay over and over again. Cobb, all right. I remember Deion Sanders used to always say, if the ball is thrown inside, you're allowing like, the cornerback to make a play. That ball should have been thrown outside. It should have been thrown to the outside shoulder. There's no reason why, in my opinion, it should have been thrown inside, man. That's my take on it. Okay, but that that happens though. We uh, we know even EJ is going to make throws that are off. If you if the receiver can catch it and make a play on the ball, it, it is their responsibility to become a defender. And he didn't become a defender and try to really get that ball from being intercepted. Yeah, that's true. We know Cobb's accuracy is suspect. So yes, it's a little bit on Cobb, but he didn't gain separation on that route. And the receiver or the he's supposed to turn into the defender. And yeah. I think that was one of the, the questions about him coming out was, yeah, he can block, but can he, is he big enough to wrestle with a cornerback when, when the ball's, you know, going to go either way? And uh, So I think some of that play was on him. Maybe not 100% of it, but, you know, Stevie's really good at keeping the ball away from the defender. That's true. Yeah. Um, so that, but he's going to make the roster, uh, so... It's interesting to watch the offense go, too, because whoever is on the team, whether it's six or seven guys, they're going to get in there because it's a fast-paced offense, and if Stevie catches three balls in a row, they're going to rotate guys in and out of this offense. So expect, expect to see a lot of different looks. Yeah, I think Easley is is one of those 
you know, standout wide receivers that, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, giving up on, including myself, man. But he definitely stepped up so far this, uh, you know, preseason. So I'm pretty sure just off of those first two games, he's going to make the team. Um, but I do yeah. believe that this year we're going to carry seven wide receivers and Rodgers being that seventh. No doubt, no doubt. So training camp's over uh, as of today, and the guys are going to pack their bags and drive back down the turnpike over to Buffalo. And like I said earlier, uh, in my mind, it's all about week one now, preparation for week one. We're 18 days away from our biggest rival, the Patriots, coming into the Ralph, and these guys got to put on a good show. The coaches know it. The players know it. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting couple uh, weeks here. Uh, anything you want to wrap up about 2013 training camp that really stood out to you? Our defensive scheme. That's one thing that, you know, we all thought last year that, you know, we were going to have a dominant defense. And, and I think, you know, we have the personnel for that now. I'm definitely intrigued on how well we're going to be playing on defense. Um, you know, like I said on one of my, you know, prediction videos, um, now, I'm predicating our success solely on our defense, man. I know we're going to make, make plays on offense, but, you know, we need to stop teams, man. And right now in training camp or, in you know, during this, uh, you know, preseason, you know, defense has definitely shown that, uh, you know, we're going to be dominant, man. How dominant, I don't know. You know, Mike Pettin has always, you know, brought in, you know, some pretty dominant defenses, you know, top six defenses. I think... His worst defense was last year, and they still ranked eighth. So, um, but yeah, man, that's the main thing. You know, EJ's EJ. You know, everyone knows how I feel about that. I'm pretty happy to know that. You know, uh, you know, we do ha possibly have a franchise quarterback on our hands. Um, but you know, my main thing was just seeing how well our defense gelled, and now with having Bird back, it, if he comes back to doing what he does. Watch out, man. Definitely watch out. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me was the, obviously the defensive scheme, but really both schemes because I think they both made each other better. Uh, the fact that our offense is facing a versatile defense that attacks from many different ways and the fact that our defense is facing an offense that's high paced and doesn't allow you to really set up for them. I think that's only going to make both sides of the ball better moving forward. And I also think that they're really well conditioned because of that, because of the high pace that they've been practicing at and playing at. Uh, they're probably more conditioned than a lot of the teams. Uh, even though the trend in the NFL is to move at a higher pace, I think they're doing it at a little bit of a s steeper clip than everybody else seems to be, uh, except for maybe the Eagles. So I think going into week one, there really isn't a ton they don't expect to see. Um, but we'll see how well they prepare for teams. And, and that's what I'm excited about uh, coming up here in the next week or two. So and that's all I've got for today, man. How about you? Well, that's it, man. That's it, man. Birdman is back. EJ has to start. And my life will be complete, man. It was a great show, man. Like I said, Birdman is back. Let's go, Buffalo. Yeah, man, how you doing? Come on, you good? Come on. I know you